The TurboGrafx-16 is a fantastic console, and it offers a nice alternative to the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and the other 16-bit consoles. My only real complaint about it is you go to plug it in, and you say you've plugged up your power cord, and then we're going to just hook up our AV cable here, and let's see. Do you believe it has an RF connector? Well, it doesn't have to. We can make our own composite connection, and I'll show you how right after this. Now some of you who are a little more familiar with the Turbo Graphics may be thinking, wait a minute, I don't have to make my own composite output. They make something called the Turbo Booster that just goes onto the back of this and it has composite out, so why don't I just get one of those? Well, that is one way of going about it. You also, this, this expansion port is also made for the Turbo CD, and just as, as a word of warning. I wouldn't recommend getting one of the Turbo CDs. I would recommend a Turbo Duo. It is kind of expensive, but by the time you figure in the cost of buying the Turbo CD, a lot of times the CD player doesn't actually read the discs and you have to have the right kind of system card. And by the time you kind of throw all that together, it's a lot of times just easier just to buy the Turbo Duo. But if you have one of these guys, I, I would definitely not recommend getting the Turbo Booster because literally all it does is it carries the signal out to a composite source and it carries it out directly from the pins and you can see all these pins here the second from the right down here on the bottom is going to be your video signal and there's one next to that that's a ground and then your top right uh, pin up here is going to be your right audio and the bottom or top left excuse me is going to be the right audio and the bottom left is going to be your left audio. So all, all of the signals are there. We don't have to convert them in any way. All we have to do is get them to these wires here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these composite cables and you can find these just about anywhere really and we're going to cut the ends off and then we're going to that one going overboard there then we're going to want to strip these wires away just a little bit here so we can see what we have underneath there we go and you'll see inside each one we have some wire surrounding the actual colored wire on the inside now what you're going to want to do is get all that wire kind of away like this and you're going to want to strip the inner wire. This is going to be your signal and this is going to be your ground. And we're going to put all of our grounds together into a, sig a single wire and hook that to our ground signal. So let's strip all of our wires away. Okay, so now we have our wires stripped down. And this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. The sheathing was a real pain to get through without uh, just cutting everything underneath. So I had to pull this apart a little bit, so I just used some heat shrink to put it back together. And the wires surrounding each of the individually wrapped wires inside, I've got them all twisted together. That's going to be our ground here. And then you can see our right and left audio here and our video on the left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and connect it to these smaller wires here. These are obviously the usual composite colors, and then I use a brown for a ground wire. So what we're going to do is I've got the end of this stripped already. So let's just solder this guy to our ground wire. And what I'm going to want to do 
first is put, let's see, where's our salt? Put a little bit of solder on the end of the wire, and of course if you've seen any of my other videos where I've done any soldering, I recommend this whenever you're trying to solder wires together. Be sure to just put just a little bit on to the end of the wire like that. It's been a little while since I've soldered, so if I'm not doing so good, I apologize. Alright, let's see if we can get this bent around so that these two will even sit near one another. Alright, so we'll get just a little bit of solder on this big guy here. I'll probably put just a little more than I normally would. Reason being, you've got all of these wires that are sort of connected together here. And we want to make sure that they don't come apart when we get all of this hooked up. Alright, so we've got a little solder on that one. And what I usually do in this case is I'll put the two wires together and just put the iron up under them just for a second. And my iron sucks, so it may take a second. There we go. And finally, oh, <laughs> or not, you get the two together, kind of let the iron go like that. Give them just a second to cool off. And then you should have your soldered wire there. Now what I'm going to do to make sure that the signal and this is the ground signal so it's not really you know a huge deal about it getting out anywhere but just to make sure that our signal doesn't go anywhere that we don't want it to I'm going to shield it by taking a little bit of this heat shrink here and we'll just work it down over this one part and normally I would like to use a hair dryer for this kind of stuff because it, it usually works a little bit better. Sometimes when you use a lighter you end up with sort of a black residue all over everything, but just to do a quick and dirty job here, I'll just use the lighter. So now we've got that all insulated and that should be ready to go. So we'll do the same thing with these three wires and then I'll show you the next step. So we have our cable ready to go here. We've got all of our wires connected and this cable certainly isn't going to win any beauty contests but should be okay. And what I'll probably do here, you see there's still some exposed wire from the ground. I'll probably put a little more heat shrink over this just to sort of seal that off. Now the other ends that are going to need to be connected to our pins, you can see I, I've uh, stripped away maybe a quarter inch of wire. I wouldn't strip away too much but this is what's going to going to connect to your pins and what you're going to need are some of these D sub connectors. Now these are the female ones. Uh let me show you the male ones. These are the ones that you do not want. Let's see. I'm not sure if this will focus. But you can see these are just just straight pins. You don't want those. You definitely want the female ones. I'm not sure if you can See these, but you can see there's a little hole in there, and that's where we're gonna we're gonna put this around the pin. So you can see on our turbo graphics itself. Just break one of these off. And you can see here that this will fit right over, maybe it will, <laughs> right over one of our pins like that. Now we will have to sort of clamp the end down just a little bit. Uh, to get it to be a more solid connection. But this should work just fine. So what you're going to want to do next is take one of your wires and you sort of lay it in this 
connector pin here and I honestly don't know if I can get this to focus enough to where you can see it but I usually put just a little bit of the sheathing into this last part of the connector and then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and crimp this guy down and I have to tell you that I'm uh, not the most coordinated person when it comes to some of these little tiny projects but let's see what we got here so you want to crimp it on the top looks like my crimping tool is not really doing the job here but so you crimp this guy on the top here and then you're going to crimp it on the side as well all right And again, this is kind of a mess. Part of it is that I have one of these incredibly cheap uh, sort of multi-purpose wire strippers, crimpers. Um, and I would recommend if you're doing a lot of this work, kind of work like I do, not to get this. Uh, so don't follow my example on that. But that is the cheapest one you can get. So you can see we've got it connected here. And it's nice and secure. Now the only problem we might run into is when we plug it into our turbo graphics, uh, you notice this is just bare metal here. So if this touches any of the other pins, then we're going to get our signals crossed. And we definitely don't want to do that. So the solution for that is to take some heat shrink here, and I've already cut this to an appropriate length and we just put some heat shrink over the end and I'll put it right up to the tip here and once we get this sort of shrunk over the end you notice I just cut it just long enough to cover the end here the reason is uh, a lot of people will either drill some sort of hole out of the back or or you know damage the case in some way I'm gonna try to keep this mod uh, from damaging the case at all so I'm going to try to actually run the wires underneath this guy here I might have to make this hole just a little bit bigger but I'm going to try to run it out with the power cable so that I don't have to actually uh, you know do too much damage to my turbo graphics case alright so why don't we put all of the pins on here and we'll put our heat shrink on and then we'll hook this thing up okay so now we have everything connected and as I said before, this one is definitely not going to win any beauty contests. And some of you who have seen my other mod videos know that I usually like things to look a little more professional than this. But I'm, I'm kind of short on time, so I'll probably revisit this at some point. But this works for right now. And you can see we have our four wires. Uh, all the pins are connected. And I just have this electrical tape on here just to kind of hold everything flush so that we can we can put our back back on here. Now, I'm not going to put this on right at the moment because I need to hook up my power cord, but there is enough room for all of the cables and the power cord to fit out the side here, so I don't need to do any further uh, modifications. And in fact, uh, part of the beauty of this particular mod is that it's it's done absolutely nothing to the console. If I want to take all of this off at you know at the end of the day and do something completely different I can or if I just want to get rid of it all together I can so how about let's uh, take a look at it in action what I'm going to show you now are the demo modes from a couple of different games in both the standard RFL and our new composite mod and I should note that this is a direct capture so the signal on the RF is going to look a little bit dirtier than it probably will on your TV but one thing that you will notice is that the the picture is a lot darker the signals not quite as good and again the the difference is uh, kind of amplified because this is a direct capture it's not going to look quite this bad on your TV or the difference is not going to be quite this much now I should also note but there is a difference between the mono sound of the RF and the stereo sound of the composite and you can hear that in certain games where they utilize the stereo sound and sidearms is one of those so let's take a listen to that
And again, so in addition to our better picture quality, we're going to hear the stereo sound in use on this one. Now this game, Bonk's Adventure, is very colorful and in this one we'll see exactly the difference between the sort of dimmer uh, color that we get and the much more vibrant colors of the composite mod. So that was a quick look at how to save yourself some money from buying one of those turbo boosters and actually creating your own composite output for your TurboGrafx-16. I think the games for this system look really great and they look even better with the composite output and especially if you're running this on an HDTV, the RF signals tend to look a little bit dark and they tend to, the, the signal quality is obviously different. So in any case, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave any comments, tips, suggestions, etc., etc. And uh, thanks for watching.